WROI time now for Woodlawn Hospital Doc Talk as we welcome Phyllis back to the studio and good morning how are you? I'm great Randy how are you? Good yeah there you go get it closer everybody wants to hear your beautiful accent this morning. Thank you. How are we uh, how are we doing a beautiful sunshine on this Monday can't beat that can't beat Indiana ever. <laughs> well, some people probably think so because, you know, when it's not so nice here, then they don't appreciate it. So, Ty, we're going to talk today a little bit on the mental health. That's true. It is. So uh, we'll let you just start it right out and, and give us some uh, information about mental health and some facts. Well, mental health is very, very important. Um, most of the patients that I see that have issues are with anxiety and depression. Mm -hmm. And the biggest demographic with that are young ladies in the teenage to early 20s. Um, but that doesn't mean it skips the guys and it doesn't <laughs> mean that it skips older ages. But generally if they come in and they're honest about what they're feeling, we can treat them appropriately and six months later get off medicine and, and be back to yeah. themselves again. Well, you know, and part of it, I know some people, uh, it's called denial, mm -hmm. uh, is the biggest, probably the biggest fight of the whole thing is uh, people think that, oh no, I, I don't want anybody to know that I have a mental illness. That's very true. Um, they want to believe that this is something that involves their strength, their personal strength. And the truth is, everybody has issues with mental health from time to time. If we lose a loved one, that can send us into a depression. We need help, and yeah. we need to be honest about needing help. And, and you, you talk about uh, medicine and, and quickly uh, helping getting back to normal. I, I think the quicker that you can get help and get back to normal, the, the better it is. That's certainly true, and you don't want to dig yourself into a hole that's harder to get out of. Um, a number of my patients, too, are very, very hesitant to go for counseling. And I tell them, this is a tool in your toolbox yeah. to help you get through this and to be stronger afterwards. It's, obviously, it depends on each person. Uh, everybody's different on how they handle or how the beginning. But would counseling be a, a, a start or would the medicine be a better start and then counseling follow up to, to help maybe keep you off the medicine? For for some people, it just it just depends on themselves, yeah. okay? Uh, a lot of my patients don't trust that counseling is going to help, <laughs> that somebody's going to know my dirty secret. Yeah. Um, but when they come to me, I s sit down with them and I ask them to be honest. And sometimes they'll say, well, I just can't focus. Maybe I need something for ADD. And when you start talking to them and you ask them, what are your symptoms? And it, you say, are you having tearfulness? For the guys, they say, I'm emotional. <laughs> they don't admit to that tearfulness. Uh, but are you irritable? Are you having mood swings? Are you having trouble sleeping where you didn't before, whether it's initiating sleep or staying asleep? A lot of people get up at 2 and 3 in the morning and they say, I just can't get a good restful sleep. Yeah. Are you enjoying the things that you enjoyed before? Um, can you? Are you feeling anxiety? Uh, when you're feeling really depressed and you feel like nothing could be worse, you have you're anxious because somebody's going to come and pile something else on top of you. And with that, then that's when you really need to make sure you get the help because right. obviously you don't want anybody feeling that way for uh, any a length, of, length time. of time. Yeah. And two, if you are having suicidal ideation or suicidal planning you definitely need to reach out. You definitely need to look at your support systems, okay? Especially if you're a young lady. You should have a mom and a dad or a favorite teacher, even someone from your church group. And people kind of push off church groups now, but so often they're your backup family. So look to someone who can help you. Uh, often I make a contract with that person if they've told me that they've had suicidal ideation or planning where they have to contact me or a loved one, someone that they trust before they act on anything. And that's very important. I know you mentioned teachers and I know uh, kids nowadays, you know, they're, they do, they kind of shy away from teachers a little bit, but you know, there's, there's a lot of great teachers out there that would be w loving and willing to help people that's that, so that have issues. That is so true. 
You know, one of the other things is, you know, obviously is is then following up with it. Once you once you get a little bit of a treatment and you think you're better off, it's just not going to go away. Right. If I end up prescribing medications, I have a couple that are my personal favorites because so many people say, oh, those medicines, they just control your mind. Well, I choose two of the medicines and I rarely stray from them because they have few side effects. The people who come back to me, and yes, they have to come back, um, <laughs> they say, oh, that medicine was wonderful. It just made everything chill to the background. I could handle things better and I could look at life better. You know, yeah. um, I will say this, I usually have them come in initially and when we have the talk, start them on a very low dose of the medicine so that it doesn't act as a shockwave to the brain when you start messing with those neurotransmitters. Mm -hmm. And then a month later, come back and say, did this medicine work for you? Well, it's time to get to a normal dose. And then follow them back in three months afterwards. Yeah. So you have five to six months treatment, and most people are at that time past whatever got them to the state, and they're able to move on yeah. with their lives. And, and the biggest thing is just being honest up front. That's true, that's true. I mean, you, you, you don't want to mask uh, when you come talk to you, sit in your office, you don't want to mask things. You, mm -hmm. you, I mean, unfortunately, you, you got to be pretty upfront because the medicine that you prescribe may not be exactly what they need if that, they're not telling the truth. That's true. That's very true. And so that kind of gets to be iffy sometimes too. I, I, I'm, I, I'm I guessing. Have to, <laughs> I have to have honesty with yeah. them. They have to play their part in their mental health. Uh, obviously, uh, mental health uh, uh, is is growing. Um, not only you know in, in across the country, but uh, even locally. Uh, and, and again, it's uh, uh, being able to admit to it. That's true. Um, as I said, most of the time I see anxiety and depression, but there's a lot of bipolar disorder in the community. I don't. I tell people straight up front, I don't treat bipolar disorder. That is a mental health issue that needs to be diagnosed by a psychiatrist, and they are more adept and knowledgeable with the medications that are truly going to get these people where they need to be with their lives. Obviously, if someone's interested in coming to talk to you, how, how would they do that? Oh, they would just call the office, okay? The number is 574-223-4337. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry from Texas. I nearly yeah, yeah, came out of that 409 area. Okay. <laughs> but obviously, uh, you're willing, Phyllis, willing to talk with people, and, and you know, even if you uh, can't help them, you're ready to guide them into the right true, direction. True, We have uh, so many resources in this community. Uh, Four County, which is now 4C, has a crisis intervention team and I've had to call them out a couple of times to help people who really, really needed that intervention for them. And like you said, even uh, if you're just the person to call before you're having those thoughts, just to call and talk to somebody. Right, I'm you're, there for you're them. There. Uh, anything else this morning on that? Oh, let me say this. We have to set our brains up for a win. I tell <laughs> my patients that. And in doing that, we have to have things like water. Most people don't realize, hey, water is really important. But if your brain's dehydrated, it's not going to work correctly, okay? Also, a good balanced diet. You need those vitamins and minerals from your fresh fruits and vegetables, okay? And then exercise. Exercise increases the endorphins, which are the natural chemicals in the body, to give us that high to make us feel better. Obviously, uh, that's why you see some people saying that, uh, you know, I'm, my, my brain's all fuzzy, I need to go out on a run. I, yeah. I've heard people say that. that I, I just need to true. get out or go for a walk in nature. True. And the vitamin D in this area from the end of October until April, mm -hmm. we have that whole permacloud thing. So I would say 99% of my patients when I check their vitamin D levels are very low and it's important for yeah. your, both your mental and physical health. Do you see, uh, obviously in Indiana here, you talked about the, you know, the sunshine, the vitamin D. Do you see a increase more in the winter time because of people course, are, seasonal or, affective disorder. are locked in the house more than, and don't get out? That's certainly true. Uh, what would be a suggestion on that? Obviously, uh, with snow and the cold, people not necessarily get wanting to get outside. How would they maybe help themselves during the wintertime months? That wonderful thing called YouTube. There's exercises that are available. Um, 
Certainly, vitamin D supplementation is a wonderful thing. It, it's over the counter; yeah. you can go get it. Um, good multivitamin a day yeah. is a great thing. You know, I think too. The other thing is just maybe communication with people. Some people That's just so will lock themselves up in the winter time. They don't want to go out. It's cold. It's snowy. But then they don't talk to any friends or right. relatives or anything. And, and it's been proven that you have to have a good, well balanced, long lived life. You have to have com communication with other people. Yeah. You have to have connection. So whether it's your friends, whether it's your family, your church group, whoever, it's so important to maintain that. So let's give us that number one more time if somebody is interested in coming to talk to you and, and trying to uh, uh, take care of maybe some of that mental illness stuff that they've got going on, whether it's early stage or they've been battling it for a while and would like to get some help. Give us that number again. It's 574-223-4337. Phyllis, I appreciate you coming in this morning. Always great talking with you, and we'll look forward to talking to you again. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. With Long Hospital Doc Talk here on a Monday here on Giant FM Morning Show.